Chapter 3 Kondama Raju The Liberated Soul The grandfather of this body Kondama Raju used to worship Venkavadutha a saintly person in the Ratnakram lineage regularly He had two sons by name Pedda Venkama Raju and Chinna Venkama Raju Pedda Venkama Raju was the father of this body Kondama Raju's younger brother also had two sons namely subba raju and venkata rama raju all these four sons were happily living together this was a joint family however the sons could live together happily as brothers but not the daughters in law as sisters in due course there arose differences of opinion among the four brothers due to the misunderstanding among the daughters in law they therefore decided to live separately i was very young at that time one day kondama raju during the course of a conversation requested me my dear you have a pure and sacred heart whatever you speak is truth i have made a resolve i need your opinion on this then i inquired from him grandfather what is that resolve he told me I want to make these four sons live separately. I concurred with his view, saying, "Very good. These four families have been living together with tolerance and mutual understanding all these years. Now, they have lost these values. Therefore, it is better to separate them." Kondama Raju then inquired, "My dear, how do you know about this?" I replied It is quite evident from their thoughts words and deeds what more proof is required Kondama Raju was very happy he said You have given a beautiful reply I will put into action my plan today itself He called the four sons and told them My dear sons from now on you live separately and discharge your family responsibilities lead a happy life they were also ready for this arrangement since the women had already lost their patience and tolerance kondama raju called his four sons and told them you share among yourselves all that belong to our family i don't want anything then the sons pleaded with him saying that he must stay for a period of 6 months with each one of them in turn kondama raju did not agree to this proposal he told them frankly i will not come to your houses i don't need your food whatever i have acquired you share among you four equally but give me one property which i value most the sons inquired what it was he told them give me satyam if that one boy is with me that would be enough i don't need anything else he asked me will you come along with me i said yes and went along with him from then onwards i used to stay with kondama raju kondama raju was very fond of me he had a divine vision he was a great devotee and a gnani realized soul that was why he opted for me he had realized my divinity he used to call me satya that satya truth alone stood by him my job in those days was to cook for him he took a small room for rent i used to get up early in the morning every day and wash the utensils cook food and thereafter run to attend my school in bukkapatnam putaparthi did not have a middle school in those days hence i had to go to the higher elementary school in bukkapatnam exactly at 1 o'clock the bell used to ring signifying our lunch time then i would go running to putaparthi serve food to the grandfather eat some myself and again return to bukkapatnam running all the way that was my daily routine in those days 
Kondamaraju was, however, very sad that I was put to a lot of physical strain running between Puttaparthi and Bukapatnam daily. He therefore advised, Satya, you need not come all the way from Bukapatnam daily in the lunch hour just to serve me food. I can serve myself. When you go to school in the morning, take some food along with you for yourself. In those days, it was very difficult to obtain even aluminium utensils in this remote village. Hence, I used to pack some semi-solid ragi sankati, gruel made of ragi cereals, in a cloth and take it to school for my lunch. As soon as the lunch bell rang, all the children gathered at one place to partake of their lunch brought from their homes. They usually brought some rice and chutney in small tiffin carriers. I had no rice in my cloth sack. Only ragi sankati was available. In fact, that was my staple food right from my childhood. I moved a little away from those boys to take my lunch, lest they might think that I was a poor boy and could not afford to eat rice. I was hesitant to take lunch in their company because of a feeling that I might be belittling the honour of our family. Everyone was to uphold the honour and dignity of one's family thus. The next day, I approached Kondamaraju and told him, Grandfather, if I take Ragi Sankati in front of all those boys, they may think otherwise. Hence, I will come home and take my food here itself, even if it is a bit difficult. It was bound to cause some physical strain to me to go home for lunch from Booker Putnam daily and get back to that place immediately after lunch. However, that was a better arrangement for me. Pleasure is an interval between two pains. One cannot experience happiness without undergoing some difficulties. If an ornament is to be made out of gold, it has to be melted in fire then it has to be hammered and cut into pieces. Thus, when gold is subjected to so many processes, it becomes a beautiful ornament. Hence, if one wants to enjoy happiness, one must undergo certain difficulties. I, therefore, informed Kondamaraju, Grandfather, I am prepared to undergo any ordeal. I don't shy away from difficulties. In fact, this is not an ordeal. It is a good exercise for me. He was astonished at my reply and said, What sort of an exercise is this? Why such a big exercise at this tender age of eight years? However, he could not say no to my decision. He loved me intensely. He never used to believe anyone except me. That was the reason why he attained such a noble end. Ishwaramma used to visit Kondamaraja's residence every now and then and plead with him, Dear father-in-law, please come and stay with us. You spend six months in each of the houses of the four brothers. Don't we deserve to serve you? He used to reply, No, I have Satya with me. That is all right for me. He used to have such firm faith in me. I have not touched sweets ever since I was born. If I start taking sweets, hundreds of devotees will bring different varieties of sweets for me. I don't even take fruits or milk or curd. Mine is a simple food consisting of a small quantity of sankati, a semi-solid food made of ragi cereals with grounded chutney or a leafy vegetable. Kondamaraju also used to relish this food. He used to tell me, My dear, whatever you eat, serve the same food to me also. As soon as I get up from bed, I would finish off my daily chores quickly and cook some sankati and leafy vegetable or chutney for myself and grandfather. All people in our street used to like the food prepared by me. 
By the time I returned from school in Bukkapatnam, all those who were suffering from fever would wait in a line in front of our house. The moment I stepped into our house, Kundamaraja would tell me, My dear, these people are suffering from fever. It seems they desire to have the pepper rasam prepared by you. Please give them immediately. I then quickly prepared that rasam and filled their tumblers with it. After partaking of that pepper rasam, they used to feel relieved and happy, saying that the fever was gone. I was an expert in cooking. Hence, people in the neighboring houses used to come to a house to take the curries prepared by me. There is a lot of difference between the old and new customs and traditions in the villages. In the olden days, the washerman and the barber used to come to the houses and take the food offered by the householders on festive occasions like Ugadi, Telugu New Year Day and Sankranti. In our house, myself and Kondamaraju were the only members. Hence, even on festive occasions, I myself used to cook for both of us as well as others, whereas Ishrama, the mother of this body, and Venkama and Parvatamma, the sisters of Swami, used to prepare Bobatlu, a kind of sweet in their houses. I thought, why not I also prepare them in our house? Accordingly, I prepared Bobatlu on such festivals and served the old man as well as the washerman and the barber sumptuously. On a certain festival day, while Kondamaraju and myself were taking food, Pedda Venkamaraju, the father of Swami, came there on some work. Kondamaraju invited him to partake of food in our house, saying, My dear son, today is a festival day. You also take food here along with us. Venkamaraju agreed and had his food along with us. He praised me, saying that the items were very tasty. He also commented, I don't know what is wrong with these ladies. They don't take enough care to prepare the items tasty. He then went home and chided Ishrama and Venkama profusely by saying, Look, how tasty Satyam is preparing the food and sweets like Bobatlu. From tomorrow, you go to him and get me whatever items he prepares. I will eat only those items. Ishrama and Venkamma were very unhappy with this unexpected reprimand. They came running to me and ventilated their anger, saying, Satya, because of you, we had to face the wrath of Father. Why do you prepare the food so tasty? One day, while I was sleeping during night, the sound of Omkara was emanating from my breath. Kondamaraju, who was sleeping by my side, was surprised. He put his ear near my breath and heard the sound carefully. The next day, early in the morning, he told me, Satya, my dear, we must celebrate this occasion. I inquired, Grandfather, what occasion? He replied, The sound of Omkara emerged from your breath last night. I tried to explain it as a routine matter. I asked him, Is it something new? It was always there. Thereafter, he used to hear the sound of so hum, so hum, now and then while I was asleep. He used to come near me and test whether I was breathing or not, putting his finger near my nose. He was surprised to hear the sound of so hum with no signs of breathing. Thus, Kondamaraju had several divine experiences. One day, while I was cooking food, he closed the door, came near me and called, Satya, Satya. I inquired, what is the matter? Thereupon, he held both my hands and pleaded, Satya, these are not hands. I consider them to be your feet. I have a desire. At the time of my departure from this world, you must pour some water in my mouth with your divine hands. 
I promised him that I would do so. Thereafter, he lived for twenty years. The name given to Ishwarama by her parents was Namagiriyamma. Having realized the divinity in me, Kondumaraju suggested to Pedda Venkamaraju to change her name as Ishwaramma. Pedda Venkamaraju could not understand why he was making such a suggestion. Nevertheless, bowing to the wishes of his father, he gave her the name of Ishwaramma. Kondumaraju thought that since she was the mother of Lord Ishwara, the name of Ishwaramma would be most appropriate to her. Once, he offered his pronouns to her, saying, Ishwaramma, you appear to be an ordinary woman, but in reality, you are not. Lord Ishwara himself has taken birth in your womb. How fortunate you are, O oh mother! In fact, she was his own daughter-in-law. Will there be a father-in-law or a mother-in-law who offer their pronouns to their daughter-in-law? Kondamaraju gave a new definition to Ishwaramma's name. He told her, Ishwaramma means the mother of Lord Ishwara. Hence, your name has become sanctified and meaningful, O mother. Another day, he called Venkamma and told her, I am sorry that all our people are leading a life of ignorance and innocence. No one seems to have recognized the divine power latent in Satyam. This boy is verily an embodiment of divinity. Neither he is hungry nor he feels the need for sleep. He is going without food, water and sleep for days on end. Yet he is as fresh and active as ever. Thus, those who are able to realize the nature of divinity can rise to any level in comprehending divinity. Those who are unable to do so can never realize divinity despite witnessing any number of divine leelas. How can the blind witness the brilliance of the sun? The glory of my divinity was increasing day by day. Within no time, groups of people started visiting Kondamaraju's house. When someone questioned them why they were flocking to his house, they used to reply, Kondamaraju has a grandson in whom there is a lot of divine power. He appeared in our dreams and solved our problems. Time rolled on thus. The elder brother of this body, Sesha Maraju, returned to Puttaparthi for vacation. He was under the misapprehension that the grandfather, Kondamaraju, was coming in my way to pursue higher education, keeping me all along with him. He, therefore, informed all the members of the family that he would take me along with him to his place and put me in the high school. He did not like several people visiting our house continuously in search of me. In those days, people used to hold educated people in high esteem. Since Sesha Maraju underwent the teacher's training course, he was considered to be a highly educated person and was respected by the people. He came and argued with Kondamaraju, Grandfather, don't allow anybody to visit this boy. This is not divine power, or for that matter, any power at all. This looks like a kind of hysteria. Hence, ensure that no outsider visits our house. <laughs>